Shalom, I am Rabbi Michael Panitz, and I'm speaking to you from the pulpit of Temple Israel of Norfolk, Virginia. At this time, I'd like to speak to you on the subject of Mount Olympus and modern Olympic idolatry. The Olympic Games are upon us. We suddenly get involved in games and in sports we typically ignore for four years. We absorb terminologies and statistics that represent a passing fad for hundreds of millions of spectators, but a lifetime focus for the athletes we watch on our television screens. Honestly, two weeks ago, how many of you knew what twisties are? Now it is very likely that many people we know who have almost no knowledge of gymnastics have suddenly felt entirely competent expressing an opinion as to whether an athlete is entitled to withdraw from a competition because of the mental disorientation that goes by that misleadingly cute name, twisties. While the Olympics are supposed to represent a good-hearted, if intense, competition, serving as a sublimation for the cruder passions and aggressions of group identity, that ideal is only seldom accomplished. Indeed, although we have seen the competitors congratulate and commiserate with each other after their races and meets, we sports fans tend to self-segregate into our national identities with scarcely any interest in or respect for the superbly trained athletes representing other nations. I have to wonder if the Olympic ideal has not been inundated by the floodwaters of xenophobia. A biblical question. What do you call it when something that is good, it is a good, but it's not the ultimate good, when that gets treated as an ultimate value? The right answer is idolatry. The Torah has a lot to say about idolatry. In the biblical passage, we are set to read this coming Sabbath. Moses warns the people Israel that when they arrive in the land of Canaan, they are not to take up the idolatry of the Canaanite nations, but rather they are to worship the one God who is the divine parent of all people. And while the Israelites themselves often fell short, as the Bible unflinchingly tells us, their ideal remained clearly preached by their prophets, including their final prophet, Malachi, chapter two, verse 10. Do we not all have one father? Has not one God created us? Why then do we deal treacherously everyone against his brother? It is idolatry to betray the brotherly and sisterly connection binding all of us to each other. That is the ultimate consequence of monotheism. The original Olympics were dedicated to Zeus, the chief god of Olympus, according to ancient Greek paganism. Today we have secularized our Olympic games, but I fear that a certain kind of idolatry is alive and kicking. In the Olympic arena, idolatry corrupts patriotism. Patriotism is a good. Our countries deserve our support, although sometimes 
that support needs to take the form of constructive self-criticism. But when the ideology of my country, right or wrong, replaces the ideology that we know from the second stanza of the hymn, America. America, America, God mend thine every flaw, confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. When that jingoism happens, patriotic loyalty has become idolatry. In the past week, the idolatry of excessive nationalism in America was mixed in a deadly fashion with two other species of idolatry, the idolatry of racism and the idolatry of anti-intellectualism. All of those sins came together in a shameful chorus of denunciation directed against the African-American gymnast, Simone Biles, when she benched herself on account of a disorder of her proprioception. Her mind wasn't accurately letting her know where she was in space as she performed her gyrations. Very dangerous condition. Can lead to horrible injury. People should be scrupulously honest with themselves in pondering whether they were quicker to criticize this athlete than they would have criticized an athlete with less melanin in their skin. And people should think hard before assuming that they, and not a neurologist or a physiologist or a thoroughly trained professional, that they, watching the sports news, are best able to judge another's mental condition. Indeed, the speed with which armchair, or should I say couch potato pundits, pilloried this athlete, when she temporarily withdrew from competition, is a shameful index of how primed these people are to prejudge. Does anyone who's willing to reason before casting the first stone think that an athlete who has literally dedicated her life to excelling in these competitions, do they think that she would voluntarily withdraw for a light or passing reason? These athletes have absorbed more falls and endured more physical pain than their critics can begin to imagine. So the sudden chorus of castigation against supposedly pampered athletes displaying an unpatriotic lack of mental toughness is actually a mirror into the warped souls of the critics. Now, there is a sequel to the story of her withdrawal. In the final gymnastics competition, Simone Biles returned to the arena, performing a routine on the balance beam. That is vastly more difficult than anything the tens of millions or hundreds of millions of spectators could have accomplished. But that was less virtuosic than the standards of the top gymnasts assembled, and less ambitious than Biles' own previous performances. She won a bronze medal for that performance, which I think we can agree was a fair judgment. But she also won back something infinitely more precious than a disc of metal to be worn around one's neck. We can and should cheer for the evidence that her healing is proceeding, even if it is not yet complete. I hope that this episode leads to a national conversation about the need to respect the humanity of the men and the women we see on the screen 
they're not robots fulfilling the programming that we ordain for them in order to sustain some sense of national superiority. By extension, going beyond the games, going back to daily life, the people we see who grapple with broken circuits in the brain, they are no less vessels of the Tselem Elohim, the divine image, than is anyone else. In the classic Jewish ethical book, Pirkei Avot, the chapters of the fathers, the great sage Hillel says, the al tadin et chavercha ad shetagia limkomo, do not judge your fellow until you have arrived in his place. A dose of humility and an understanding for our shared humanity, that would be a gold medal accomplishment to come out of the Olympics. Shalom.